Porter Williamson, who was uh, served under Patton uh, as a first lieutenant uh, when Patton commanded the First Armored Corps, says, and I'm quoting, General Patton's principles of discipline did not match modern rules for management. The idea of giving reprimands in a quiet and personal conversation to avoid hurt feelings was not for General Patton. I remember his words, when you make a mistake in war, the punishment is death. The big trouble is that your mistake could cause a hundred men to die also. No one ever hears, peekaboo, I see you, I'm going to count to ten, then shoot. <laughs> That's not the way war works. If the enemy can shoot first, you will be dead. In our staff meetings, General Patton advised instant punishment for every mistake. Often a staff officer would go to the defense of a friend or suggest some form of soft punishment. When an officer would disagree in man uh, with, with, when an officer with a degree in management would explain the newer ideas for leadership, General Patton would explode. All that save the ego business is not for war. In other words, he chewed them out wherever they made their mistake, no matter how many people were present. He said, a dead man does not have any ego. How long after you touch a match does it take before you get burned? War follows the law of Mother Nature, Patton used to say. What happens to the tree that does not put its roots down deep? Such a tree will die for lack of water or blow over with the first wind. Every mistake has its own punishment. How long does it take for a garden rake to hit you in the face when you step on the teeth when the teeth are towards you? How long after you stub your toe until the pain comes? In other words, Pat was pointing out, look, in warfare you have to face reality, and therefore it didn't make any difference what the rank. He chewed them out right where the mistake was made, no matter how many people were present. He said, I'm not interested in your feelings. I'm interested in your performance. Every man serving with General Patton knew that to make a mistake was to expect the wrath of his anger. It was not unusual to hear General Patton's voice on a tank command radio. Colonel Blank, you are removed from command immediately. Such sudden changes in command caused everyone to give 100% of his effort every minute. Every time any man used the radio, he knew the old man could be listening. The term old man was not a term of discredit to General Patton. It meant love and devotion for a leader. General Patton's bark on the radio was worse than his bite. After removing an officer from a command, General Patton would order the officer to report to headquarters. After a session with the officer, General Patton would usually reinstate the officer's command. When General Patton, what General Patton would do would depend on what the officer would say, whether the officer had learned anything from his demotion or not. For all of us who serve on the staff, or who had served on the staff for several months, it was difficult to keep from laughing when a removed officer would protest his punishment. It was more fun for us when a new officer transferred from Washington would protest General Patton's punishment. General Patton would stare at the protesting officer for a moment as we staff officers would grin knowing that the explosion was coming. <laughs> General Patton would often start slowly. Colonel, what happens when you touch hot electric wires? The officer would answer, you get shocked. General Patton would proceed as if he were leading a child. How long after you touch the electric wire until you get shocked? The shock would come instantly, sir. Right again. General Patton would react as if was the Washington officer was displaying outstanding intelligence. <laughs> now that time span from the touch and the shock is exactly what we try to do with our training for this war. A mistake in war can cause instant death. We are training for war, Colonel. We cannot save the ego of any man 
when the punishment is death. We cannot delay punishment for mistakes. Do you understand, Colonel? War is a killing business. The Colonel got the message. General Patton would continue, I cannot kill a man in our combat training, but I can make every man wish to be dead rather than to face my anger, no matter how public it may be. There would be a long silence as General Patton would back, walk back and forth in front of the room. Every man knew that if a mistake was made, General Patton's anger would strike with the speed of lightning. And then he would add, there's only one kind of discipline, perfect discipline. If you do not enforce and maintain discipline, you are a potential murderer. General Patton left the area, but the message stayed with us. We're in the angelic conflict. We're in a far, far greater war. And often our attitudes reflect the same soft, stupid, managerial concept. Take the little person aside because you must protect their ego. One thing about teaching the Word, your ego is not going to be very well protected if it's done right and if the passage calls for it. Well, there's another factor in learning the Word of God, and that's alertness. And the Patton, of course, in the training at Desert Center near Indio, California, used to tell them, always be alert to the source of trouble. Here's the illustration. General Patton was constantly checking with the troops to make sure they understood the mission. He spent every day and many nights training troops. I was riding with him one evening at dusk when we were outside of our diamond-shaped defense. With desert combat, there is no front combat area and rear echelon for supplies and medical tents. A desert command is the same as a battleship sailing on the ocean. The enemy can attack from any direction. The guns of the battleship cannot be turned to fire into the ship, but the guns of our tanks could be turned to fire on our own troops in this defense perimeter. With noise and confusion, the troops could get excited and forget the location of their own headquarters. So we had uh, the principle. We chained the guns to fire in only one direction, and we used aiming stakes, but nothing was successful. Any morning after a scare from an enemy attack at night, and the guns on our tanks could, be, could not be aimed directly at the center of our own camp. We wanted to prevent the slaughter of our own troops when we reached the actual combat zone and used live ammo. General Patton and I were driving in what could have been enemy territory if we'd been in combat. We drove toward our own camp when we saw one of our outer guards General Patton asked me to approach the guard to make sure the guard knew the exact assignment. I walked toward the guard who stopped me with the order, Halt! His automatic rifle was aimed directly at me. I gave the correct password and he told me I could advance. I asked the guard what his duties were and he gave me the correct duty assignment. I continued, From what direction do you expect trouble? The guard pointed to the center of our camp. I started to chew him out. That is the center of our camp, I said. The enemy would be in the opposite direction. You pointed to the exact center of our camp on the map. He put me in my place. You did not ask me about the enemy. I know where the enemy is. You asked where I expected trouble. The guard then took one hand off his piece and pointed toward the headquarters tent. That's General Patton's headquarters. That's where I expect trouble. <laughs> Lieutenant Williamson went on to say I could hear General Patton laughing. He called to me. Come back here, Williamson. The man understands his mission. <laughs> the guard asked, who was that? I answered, that was General Patton. I won't tell you what the guard said. <laughs> Only the last part of it. You've got to expect General Patton from all directions. General Patton was chuckling when I climbed into the open command car. He commented, we are doing better. We are now at the training level of the Roman legions. 
Since I did not have any knowledge of the training of the Roman legions, I could not comment. Many years later, I was reading Gibbon's book, The Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire. I thought of General Patton's words when I read, and he's quoting from Gibbon, it was an inflexible maximum of Roman discipline that a good soldier should dread his officers far more than the enemy. Alertness, very, very important in the perception of Bible doctrine. The concept of Patton called talking with the troops as a part of leadership. The stories of General Patton talking with the troops are numerous. Many of these stories are true, many are legends, but the most amazing stories are true. I remember the incident in Desert Training Center on a hot afternoon. General Patton spotted a man on a telephone pole near the camp. The man was not in proper uniform for the desert. The man was wearing a large, flat, plantation owner type hat. We're supposed to wear fiber helmets. General Patton ordered the man to climb down from the pole. The man gave some short greeting and continued to work. Again, General Patton ordered him to climb down. The man continued to splice wires and did not answer General Patton. General Patton shouted, Come down from that pole! And then he added, I'm General Patton, and I'm ordering you to come down from that pole. And, of course, uh, I don't know anything, and then, of course, the man didn't answer, and so General Patton said, I don't know anything about your problem or who you are, but I cannot take time to come down, the man said. I've got work to do. Patton then looked up the, at the pole, and the man said, You come down or I'll shoot you down. Started to pull his gun out. You have disobeyed a direct officer from a superior officer, and I have the right to shoot you down. And then the man on the pole said, If you shoot me off this pole, you'll go to jail for murder. <laughs> the only man who can order me off this pole is my telephone supervisor. <laughs> and he added, He would shoot me if I didn't stay on the job. <laughs> Patton was kind of taken back, but he finally asked, are you from the telephone company? <laughs> right. <laughs> and then the man added, we've got some mad general coming here with his big army, and they want hundreds of telephone lines. I wish you'd go about your business so I can finish splicing. <laughs> general Patton smiled and said, continue with your work. I thought you were a soldier under my command. That tan shirt and matching pants fooled me. Get that splicing finish. I'm the mad general your supervisor wants to avoid. <laughs> Flexibility is important in learning.